I'll record it. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how, how how y'all could do that, go that long without even knowing. I, know. I looked up and I forgot that there's usually a red button up there. And I'm like, hey, uh, Charlie, bud, there's not a red button up there. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> so, Charlie, 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 Charlie. Yeah. So what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Call Text podcast. I'm very excited about today. I've had the opportunity to go on Ben's podcast several times. And just the first time that I went on there, um, a couple minutes into talking, because I had listened to your podcast before, but then going on there, because sometimes you can listen to somebody else's podcast and you can hear some of the things that they're saying. And you're like, well, maybe this is coming from kind of a place where they could take notes and stuff. But can they can a person go back and forth? And then like five minutes into the conversation with you, I was like, this dude is legit. So and then at toward the end of it, I was like, how old are you? Because, you know, I knew you were younger, but I was like, how old is this kid? So uh, it's my pleasure to have Ben Shelby on the podcast today. Ben, how you doing, man? Doing well. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm very, very excited to have this conversation. So. Yeah. 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 So like I said, Ben has a podcast you want to, before we do uh, the big three or anything like that, just kind of talk about your podcast for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's called The Guide Cast with Benjamin Shelby. And people ask me a lot how long it took me to come up with that name. Literally five seconds. I was like, you know what? <laughs> why, why not? <laughs> it's mm-hmm. a little cheesy, but it's, it lets people know what's up. Uh, yeah. It's just it's a place that I made that I, I wanted to share the gospel with people. Yeah. And when you're passing by at a grocery store, you don't have the time to go deeply into a conversation all the time. So I made little tracks and I was like, Hey, you can, you know, pass them. Away. If you want to hear more on this subject, just scan that thing and then they'll take you to my podcast. Oh, that's so awesome. It, God's blessed it. Yeah. That's the main reason why I started it. God's God's blessed it. And, you know, just, just a tool in the hands of the craftsman. So that's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, yeah, go ahead and tell people because I was talking about how old you were. Go ahead and tell people how old you are. Yeah, I am uh, 17 years old as of today. Tomorrow, as of today, I will be 18. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, one of the reasons why I had been on today. One, this is this is overdue because I wanted to have you on the week after Charlie, but you know things just happened. We weren't exactly. able to get it worked out. And uh, so actually, we I just found out the other day, me and Ben share the same birthday. So uh, we'll be, yes, both sir. be turning another year earlier on the 24th. So actually tomorrow. So <laughs> yeah. have, happy early birthday, Ben. Happy early birthday to you. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. Um, th- thank you so much for coming on. So before we do kind of dive into things, we're going to do the big three. Um, actually, well, Ben, well, well, never mind. I was going to say Ben didn't know I had a podcast, but then you, uh, for, for you to say you were waiting for it. <laughs> that kind of ruined that. So, all right. Okay. So, the most Krispy Kreme donuts you think you can eat in one sitting? I bet I've ate six or seven. Six or seven, just in one sitting. That's like, what... I think that's what I have done. I, I might be able oh, to you've do done it before. before. Yeah. 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 I, uh, you, do you know who Nate Bargatze is? Is he a comedian? Uh, is he the guy, the, the world record holder for eating, that guy? No, uh, I don't think he's, he's, he talks a big game about eating different things, but I don't think he's won any kind of, I don't think he's broken any kind of records or anything, but he has a podcast and when they, if they started, I think I want to say 2019 or 2020 with their podcast mm-hmm. and it's him and two other comedians and, and all th- do what now? I said, good. That's a good time to start one. Oh, yeah, yeah, one. exactly. Yeah. But, uh, it's three guys now it's four, but they're all like, they're clean comedians. So you can listen to it and it's not just trash, you know, garbage. Um, and they talk about random stuff like bugs and, uh, cartoon, you know, just random things like yeah, that. Just fun stuff. But yeah, yeah. Just fun stuff. And, um, they, uh, during their first couple of episodes, they kept caught talking about, they thought they could eat two dozen Krispy Kremes in one sitting. And one guy said he thought he could eat 36 donuts in one sitting. <laughs> and then, and then they actually Whoa. did, they actually did the donut and uh, content like competition or whatever to see who could eat the most. And the one that said he could eat 36, ate like 13. So it was like, <laughs> you say he could eat <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, question number two, a, a celebrity or athlete that you would like to meet. Oh, Man, you know what? I'm going with kind of cheating, as in like Christian celebrities. It's not really a movie celebrity. But I would love to meet, you know, Living Waters guys, Ray Comfort, all of them. Mm -mm. Okay, they have a podcast. It's called the Living Waters Podcast. I don't necessarily agree with everything that they talk about, obviously. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's very few people I do. 
but their heart and like their impact that they've had on my life. So is just exponential. So that's the one person I think I'd want to meet. Now, if we're talking about movies, like and stuff like that, which obviously you know I'm a big movie nut. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Chris Pratt seems like a cool guy. Like, yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. He. Uh, yeah. It's funny. The have you ever saw movie ball? Uh, movie ball. Money ball. No, I haven't. That that cast on there is crazy. It was before Chris Pat, uh, Chris Pratt kind of blew up. He's so it was movie? like. Yeah, he plays oh. one of the uh, players for the Oakland A's. Yeah, oh. that's a great movie. I mean, there's some there's language in the movie, but right. that's what the, in terms of like sports movies, that's probably one of my favorite. My, that's up there. The soundtrack is really good. I like the music on there. Yeah. It really adds to you know everything that's going on. So yeah, sports I knew. Really cool. I like yeah, but I think now it's it's just got to the point where they've already kind of. So yeah, it's just gonna be the same thing. Um, okay, so question number three. Um, if you had to spend the night in one amusement park, which amusement park would it be? Mm. Is, is Disney an is, uh, amusement park? Or yeah. would it be like Cedar Point and stuff like that? No, I think, uh, yeah, I would, include, I would include Disney in that. Well, since, you know, I've always wanted to go and I never have, I would say Disney. Man, dude, the uh, we we took my kids to Disney. Well, it might have been just my daughter, yeah, because I think my our second son was uh, my wife was pregnant with him when we took her, so she was like three or four. And um, I don't remember I don't remember how it happened, but somehow we had left our stroller on one side of the park, and the place was getting ready to close, so I had to run across the park to get our stroller. And so it's dark. It's dark. The only lights, because they're trying to get everybody out. So they're turning all the lights off. And uh, so they've got like glowing walkways. And so I'm like running back and I can barely, you know, you can barely see anything. You got people coming at you and you're trying to weave in and out of people. And so I get back there to where our buggy is, our uh, stroller, and there's nobody else around. And I start hearing something. I look over and like three or four huge rats just are running. And I was like, well, there goes Mickey and Minnie. (laughs) Yeah, dude. I was like, good Lord. Yeah, but they wow. I didn't see any during the day, and we've been there several times. But yeah, it was at night. I guess it's a whole different ball game around there. All that food. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's there's a lot of you know people littering and all that stuff. I'm sure. It, it oh yeah, there was. Cool. Yeah, there was uh, you know ice cream all over the ground and pretzels and popcorn, all that stuff. But yeah, the movie Charlotte's Web, like the old animated movie. Yeah. Yeah, the scene where the rats at the fair. That's like mm-hmm. <laughs> probably what they're like. Yeah. But. Yeah. We actually read that book not too long ago with my daughter. And uh, yeah, it is. It is. So um, a little let's let's get into a little bit of your testimony, because like I said, you are, you know, 17 years old. Not a lot of people your age have the um, courage or the boldness really to speak on their faith. So like, let's go back to like, have you always grew up in the faith? Did you grow up in a Christian home? That type deal? Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've always been blessed because I grew up in a household that was religious. Like, it, you know, it's hard to explain, but we always believed that there was a God and we always, you know, went to church. But it wasn't until I was probably four or five until my mom really picked up the faith and said, OK, this faith is mine now. And, you know, she started moving forward and not just, you know, religion, but relationship with God. So I was young. So all I remember is, you know, my mom teaching us in the Lord, my mom bringing us to church, you know, like I remember all these things. So I had knowledge, you know, I've had knowledge of of God and of the things of the Lord for a long time. And my mom, you know, bless her heart, she would always tell us uh, her salvation story. And I can give you a really quick, she was sitting on the couch. I don't know if you watched John Wayne, but. Uh, she was watching McClintock. She was about, you know, whatever, nine years old, 12 years old, somewhere in there. And she's sitting on the couch in the bo- and she feels that she needs to pray. So she prays and gets saved while watching a movie. You hear that so many times when you're a little kid. You yeah. think that's the exact way to get saved. I was like, if uh-huh. I can do that exact same thing, I'm saved. So, mm. you know, I threw on a movie, went in, my room, or went in the living room, threw on a movie and just prayed. You know, thought I was saved. So I, that happened probably when I was about six or seven so i i always thought i was safe yeah. and i was i've always been relatively a good kid there's not there's no good no not one you know but i didn't really cause trouble 
Like I never think that like, so there was nothing outwardly that would make you think, okay, this kid's not safe. Yeah. But, and it was confusing because I'm, I was never rebellious. I was never, you know, I, I knew that I had my own struggles that I was dealing with. And I'm like, one of them would be lying. The other one, you know, stealing like stuff like that. Things that you do more privately. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was about 11 years old and I was like, how, how am I saved and like still being run by this stuff? You know what I mean? So, Mm. um, I, I was at our church and I don't know if your church does this, but there's a time at the end, uh, for invitation at our church. And it's kind of, I think an old fashioned thing, but, uh, he, he asked if you would like to get saved or like, if you don't know Jesus Christ is saved and you want to know him as your savior, raise your hand. So like everybody's heads are bowed, eyes are closed. So I raised my hand thinking that I'm, you know, I'm alone between me, God and pastor to, you know, cause I wanted to get that off my chest. Well, me being 11 years old and my sisters being all younger than me, I look over at them and they're all looking right at me. And I'm like, oh, man, I was mad because I was like, you guys aren't supposed to be looking. It was kind of hit on, hit on my pride because everybody thought, oh, well, it's safe. You know, he's, he's good. And so I get home and I'm yelling at my sisters, not really yelling, but like being irritated at them yeah. and being like, you know, why were you looking? And I was like, why do you even care? And I was like, mom, cause I'm not saved. And like, mm. she was like, wait, what? You know? And which just shows that doing good works. Can I get you to heaven? I was doing quote unquote more good than the bad, but I knew that I was not saved. So she was like, is there something you want to talk about? And I was like, no, I don't want to talk to mom about it. Like she, you know, so I wanted to do it on my own. And, um, you know, I, I casually, I, you know, I'm an emotional person. Yeah. Like, it's like I, I, I get worked up when it's stuff like that. So I was crying, like trying to pour my heart out to God, but I didn't want everybody to see me. So I casually put a towel over my head thinking that, you know, nobody would notice the towel over my head <laughs> and start walk and just walk downstairs and just, you know, I gave my heart of the Lord. I was like, God, I can't save myself. You can, you know, all of the deep crevices, everyone else around me thinks I'm a good person, but you know that I need you. So um, that's the day that I got saved. Uh, you know, I asked for forgiveness, and that's the day that I got saved. And I can just remember, you know, a lot of people say that, oh, you can't, you can't see God. I could see God in that moment. You know, I could, I could feel the way that I was saved. I had, I had no, um, no more guilt of anything I did. I knew that it was all on his shoulders. He already paid for it. I just had to accept it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I got saved that day problem is and we all know this getting saved and being surrendered to the lord is two different things i got saved that day but i kept living like for myself i was too nervous to tell anybody about god i was too nervous to do anything for god because i didn't want, like you know it's embarrassing it's you know i like what am i going to say that's going to help them out you have all of these thoughts in your head so probably four years i was saved and didn't do anything for God. And um, wh- this is crazy, but in 2020, I was telling Charlie this, 2020 was the single most important year of my life, which is kind of crazy in retrospect, seeing the way that, you know, the world it was that, uh, that year. But I went up to camp and I knew that I was saved, but I was faking the Christian life. You know, I was going to church, but I was not fully sold out for God. Yeah. And I was sick of it. Before I even went to camp, I was sick of playing these games. So I go up to camp uh, in northern Michigan, and I'm ready to give my heart over to the Lord, but I need somebody to help me. You know what I mean? I'm ready I'm ready to give my life completely over. I gave him, you know, I, I took his salvation. I was ready to give him my life. And um, so it was the last day of camp, and I have never, like, felt such a pit in my stomach. Like, wait. It was, it was just realizing, like, I knew I needed to sell my life or give my life over to the Lord. But I didn't realize how much he did for me until that night. And that night I was like, okay, it's time just to give it all and let him take my life completely because it's what he deserves. And I'll kind of give you a little bit of, like, 
the statements that helped me. So if anybody's here and wants to hear that, maybe it'll help you. Uh, he was talking about the feeding of the 5,000, right? Mm-hmm. And obviously, the loaves of bread and the fish weren't that much. Very, very little compared to how much it was going to be used. And the preacher said this, and it makes me want to cry thinking about it. He said, before God was able to use that bread, he had to break it. Mm. He had to break it. He had to tear mm-hmm. it up. He had to be like, he, to, for the meal to be used the way that he wanted it to be used, he had to break it. And he said, hey, if you want to be used the way that God wants you to be used, you need to be broken. And mm. I was broken. Mm-hmm. I'm done playing these games. And so I, I, at that point, I broke off everything, every, every sin that I was dealing with, whatever. I gave it to the Lord and I was like, God, this is no longer my life. This is your life. You know, it, mm. it, he, I gave, I, I don't want to seem like it's this, you know, amazing thing because it's some, it's, if I go to Taco Bell and I order my Taco Bell meal and they don't give me what I want, what I paid for, then I get upset. But yet I wasn't giving God what he paid for. He paid for my life. He paid for you know my salvation and I wasn't giving it to him. So uh, July 2020 was a day and I can pinpoint that, that my life got turned around for God. And since then, I have not gone back to, you know, to uh, not sharing the gospel, being scared to share the gospel. Now, clearly I have days where I feel, you know, insecure or whatever, like yeah. beat down, depressed. But ultimately my life is fully surrendered to the Lord and not by my means, you know, not because I'm anything great, but all because that God can do that. A lot of times we, we put a, uh, a barrier on what God would want to do. You know what I mean? We're mm-hmm. like, God doesn't want to, sometimes we act like God does not want to change you today when he does. It, it is a gradually growing process, but God, when he said, okay, it's time for you to make that step. I knew it was time for me to make that step. And I was be, I, now I can be a tool for God and let him do all the work, you know? Yeah. Before I gave my life over to the Lord, I was, and I hope I'm not rambling off too much. No, man, this is good. Keep going. Before I gave my life to the Lord, I was trying to do the Christian walk on my own. You know what I mean? I was saved, but you know how hard it is. And anybody who's tried to do this knows how hard it is. You cannot walk the Christian life on your own. Yeah. I couldn't do it. And before I gave my life to the Lord, I, I was walking my Christian life alone. But then after that, and I, I saw nothing be done. Now I walk according to what God says. Amazing things being done. I see people's lives being changed. I see my life being changed still because I'm not perfect. But it's amazing to see the way that God designs things. He designs it for a reason. Yeah. And he designs it so that, you know, no matter what we think we can do or what we think we can't do, he, he's like, hey, I don't, I don't care what you can do. I, I want to work through you. Yeah. So that's my long story. So no, man, that's since awesome. then, I've been able to see, you know, uh, people come to the Lord and it's given me this boldness, you know, uh, something that, and you said, I think this is, it was you that was telling me that this verse is what, uh, you know, you wanted to make, why you wanted to make your podcast is because when, uh, when the disciples were preaching the gospel, I think specifically Peter, Mm-hmm. They, they all marveled at his boldness because they knew that they were unlearned and ignorant men. Yeah. I'm 17. I'm unlearned. I'm not even graduated in high school yet. I'm unlearned and ignorant. But God can give me the boldness. And I just love how God can, the same boldness that God's given me, the same boldness that God's given you, he can give to anyone. They just they just need to be with Jesus, like and like uh, that verse says. So yeah. Yeah. That's my spiel. Yeah. Yeah, Acts four thirteen, and yeah. yeah, that was I was in I was in the book of Acts that pat that exact verse whenever I felt like the Lord was calling me to start the podcast, and that was my biggest thing. And I think, like you said, you're seventeen. Everybody out there has something that they feel like this is what is holding me back from fully surrendering to God. Mm-hmm. But it's like look at the people that He chose. Like He chose fishermen, He chose tax collectors, He chose the people that nobody else would choose. Right, yeah. and in those days. I believe it. I believe you got done with school when you were. I want to say you were. Uh, I think t- uh, twelve. 
so because I think it was I think you went from four to twelve to uh, and I can't remember what they called it, but like midrash or something like that, and then from uh, or maybe it was fifteen. Either way, once they got done, then the rabbis would come and they would pick from the best of the best, right, to be their students. And so, like these people that Jesus was going to that went and he picked, these were the ones that nobody else picked. That's why they were fishermen. That's why they were, you know, doing these other jobs, because these were the runts of the litter, if you will, the ones that people didn't think they could do anything. But then the people marveled and astonished by the way that they spoke, the boldness and the power that they spoke with. And it's like, yo, these dudes have been with Jesus. Clearly, they there's something going on with these guys. Mm -hmm. And that Holy Spirit is inside of all of us. And there's so many people right now that struggle with it just not understanding the power that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ. Like it doesn't have, like you said, it doesn't have anything to do with us, but when Jesus died on the cross, we need to not just be thankful that that is the cause of our salvation, but also that gives us power while we're here on earth. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. he tells us in the word in Genesis, when he established man and woman, that he was to give us dominion. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's so many people struggle with that and think, well, I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with that. When like when we were designed to have dominion here on earth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And we're too scared to grab a hold of that power. Right. You know, something that and as I'm reading through Psalm 119, I keep seeing how the psalmist he takes uh what do you call it? he takes ownership of God. And not mm. as in that he's above God, but he's like, God, you're mine. Jesus said, you know, abide in me and I in you. Henceforth, yeah, he's giving himself to us. He's giving us the power. And there's no reason that somebody like me who, you know, I, I was insecure. I, I was, uh, I, I can't speak that well. I, it's all of the things that I do right now, I shouldn't be able to do. But because he's given me the boldness, I can. That's right. And again, <laughs> which I guess in retrospect means that I can't, but he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at who he chose to get his children out of bondage in Egypt. He chose a guy with a stuttering yeah. problem that said, I can't speak. And I think it's interesting, too, because if you look in Scripture, I've been, I went back at the beginning of this year to Genesis. I spent uh, all of last year just going through the New Testament, trying to like slowly get through the New Testament, not trying to just speed through it, trying to pull out as much as I could. So I'm doing that now with the Old Testament. And so I was reading the other day in Genesis. And one thing that I'm noticing is a theme throughout Genesis is, is the men— back in those days, understood the power. And Jesus wasn't even here yet, right? Jesus right. was coming, but they understood the power that the Lord has. Like, you look at somebody like Abraham. When Sarah died, he went to the people around him and was like, hey, y'all let me choose where around here I want to bury Sarah because I don't want to bury her where I'm living, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, y'all yeah, let me, I'm, I'm going to choose. That. I'm choosing where I want to bury her. And he wasn't like cocky or arrogant about it. But those people were like, okay, we don't want to mess with this guy because we know he serves the Lord. It says that in scripture. Like they were like, we know you serve the Lord, bury her wherever you want to bury her. And like Abraham understood that I serve the creator. And so like I have that level of authority and he was taking that level of authority. And, and it wasn't like, like I said, it wasn't coming from an arrogant place because even when they said, uh, you know, you can bury her where you want it, it in scripture, it said, and I can't remember the exact uh, chapter and verse, but basically it says like he bowed to him and told him, you know, thank you for letting me, uh, you know, bury her here. And he chose where he wanted to bury her. But it was just though the people in Bible times understood the power that they had uh, from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And that has somehow gotten lost throughout time. And and we we worship God, the father. We worship God, the son. But I think a lot of times we can forget that there is it's a trinity. There's God, the Holy, the, you know, the Holy Spirit as well. And the Holy Spirit that's inside of us is the same spirit that was giving uh, Peter and John the power in the synagogue to where people are like, what is going on with these people? Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that's interesting that you said about your testimony, too, is how you felt kind of that tugging at a young age. Like you said, you were what, four or five years old when you first yeah. felt that Holy Spirit tugging. And, and you look in Scripture, Jesus says, suffer the little children to come unto me. So mm -hmm. he he's not pushing kids away. I think a lot of times people downplay the role of. Even somebody your age, you know, 16, 17 years old, downplay that role because they say you're too young, right? Yeah. But Jesus said, suffer the little children coming to me. You're feeling that tug at a young age from the Holy Spirit. We don't need to downplay that. We don't need to push that kind of thing to the side because that was a, the same type of story for me where I felt the Holy Spirit tugging at me when I was like, uh, I was, I want to say like four, 
I was either four or five years old, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom went, was, um, she was always uh, evangelizing to kids in our neighborhood, reading tracks to them and stuff like That's that. Right. And, and so I remember one day and I remember everything about it. Um, the kid that she was talking to, his name was Jesse. He was running around with his shirt off, playing around outside. And so she's like, Jesse, do you know anything about Jesus? So she starts telling him and she's not even talking to me. I'm sitting behind her. And so she reads him, you know, those little chick track things. Uh, I forget what they're, I think that they're like ch- the, the comic book strip almost kind of. Yeah. yeah. So she was, she was reading to him one of those and it was about these two kids who were basically filthy. I don't remember the whole story, but they were filthy and they were going through life. They were sinning. And when they came to Jesus, he washed them, you know, white as snow. They were completely clean when they came to that saving grace and that recognition of Jesus. And in that moment, she's like, do you want to, you know, have this same kind of uh, um, salvation, sanctification that these kids were able to? And he's like, yeah. And so she's, you know, laid it out to him, told him how to ask Jesus into his heart. And in that moment, I did. And and I remember feeling like there was it was just something kind of like coming upon me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was just. It's a tugging, like like you said. Mm-hmm. It, it was just the Holy Spirit guiding you. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just in that moment. Um, and, and just people's I know people struggle with their salvation. And, and obviously, because Satan knows our weak points, he's going to try to come after those and try to make us doubt, and try to make us think, well, that that couldn't have happened because you were so young, you know. But mm-hmm. I think um, just trusting like those the 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 price that Jesus paid was enough and that trusting on his word is true. And he says, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And yeah. And if I can interject something. Yeah, here. go ahead. Uh, well, we as Christians, and I, I think I might've talked to you about this, but we, what we as Christians get confused is two different doctrines. One being eternal security, the other being assurance of salvation. Okay. Eternal security is God's job. You know, I'm saved. God has me in his hand. Who can open the hands of God? Nobody, not even me. You're saved. You are you know, held in the hands of God. You can't open the hands of God. Nothing you do, nothing anyone else says can change that you are saved. But I struggled with my salvation for a little bit. Mm-hmm. That is on me. Assurance mm-hmm. is on me. Eternal security is on God. Mm-hmm. My assurance comes, or my lack of assurance, per se, comes when I don't trust God's promises, when mm-hmm. I'm not in God's word. And that was something I just wanted to say is because that's something that I did struggle that's with. Good. Even after I got saved, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm still not doing anything for God. I'm, why would he want to save me? The truth is I was saved and God had me in his hand. I kept, you know, imagining that I wasn't. Mm. And that's on me because I wasn't in the scripture. I wasn't learning God's precepts. I wasn't doing what he says. And that will give you a lack of security. If you're not mm-hmm. around somebody, if you and your wife were in the same house and you didn't talk for a week, there would be something wrong there. There would be no sense of security. If you, if you, well, it's even crazier because if God dwells inside of you and, and we're not doing anything to communicate with him, there's not going to be a sense of security there. But it's when we are following God, when we are, you know, in our, in our scripture and, that's when we'll find assurance. Mm-hmm. And, and it doesn't matter if I don't have assurance. If I think I'm not saved right now, I'm still eternally secure. So that's just two doctrines that go like this a lot and they need to be separated. Just yeah. for clarification. Sake. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, th- and the thing about it too is, you know, I see a lot of stuff, especially on social media and stuff now, since I'm on there more, you know, with the podcast and posting right. and stuff where people are like, well, it's not once saved, always saved. Well, then Jesus shouldn't have came and, and paid the price that he yeah. paid. Then it, it's, it, then, what was it worth? Like if, if you know what I'm saying? Like if yeah. he did not pay the ultimate price with his death on the cross, when he literally became sin and died on the cross for us, it was worth nothing mm-hmm. if we could lose our salvation. And if here's a question that I, you know, if whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the Bible also says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave us only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but what? have everlasting life so if i can lose that life was that life ever everlasting no it wasn't exactly because if 
if God's like, okay, you can have this and you're going to live forever with me. Oh, wait, nope, you sin. I'm taking that away from you. That was never a gift and that was never eternal life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. It's, uh, I, I was thinking about it a lot today too, because like you said, just because we are Christians and just because we're trying to do actually more. So if you're trying to do more for God, you're going to get more attacks mm-hmm. from, the, from Satan. You're going to get more of that because that target is getting bigger and bigger on your back. The more that you're trying to do for him. And, and since my one year, um, Satan's really been coming after me with a lot of spiritual attacks. Right. And so today was really tough and it was, it was, it was a day that I'm not, it was just, <sighs> I don't know. I let my temper get the best of me a lot today, you know, and it was just one of those days where I'm like, man, this, this, it's not been a great day. It wasn't a great day at work. And so I got home and I was praying and I'm like, you know, Lord, I wasn't talking to you today. Like I should be, you know, I let my temper get the best of me. I I said things I shouldn't have said at work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting there and I was like, and I'm thinking, man, like there's times where you, where the devil makes you feel like, okay, you've, asked for for forgiveness for this enough like it's run out and so i was like praying to god and i'm like you know i'm I'm sorry for this and i come out of my bedroom um i came i came after work and i took a shower and everything and i came out of my bedroom and my son came running up to me and he's two years old and so i bent down and i was playing with him i was hugging him you know and they, they like you know obviously kids like being tickled and stuff so i was tickling him and playing with him and he wouldn't leave he just kept he was holding on to me he was loving me and I was thinking, and I just kept telling him, you know, I love you. I love you. And it hit me right then. God was saying, like, just think about that, yeah. right? Like, and you're imperfect, and you know how much you love your son. I'm perfect. Think about how much more I love you. And I was like, you know, it, it, it hit me hard, you know, because, and I was just, I was just like hugging my son. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, you know? And so it, it just made me think about Luke 15, the prodigal son, because, If you look in in Luke 15, it talks about how after the prodigal son had went away and done all the things that he went to do. First of all, he took a job so low as to feed swine, which was an unclean animal. So he was literally feeding things that they considered, you know, unclean. So like weren't even fit for them to eat. He's feeding them. He's taking care of them. So he finally comes to his senses and goes back to his father. And scripture says his father was already looking for him. Cool. Right. And that's so beautiful because he he was waiting for his son because in those and, and context is so important when you're reading scripture as well, because one reason that he's looking out for his son is because what his son had essentially done by saying, give me my inheritance now is he was wishing basically wishing his father was dead because he's saying, go ahead and give me my inheritance now. Yeah. And, you know, in those days, they wouldn't get their inheritance until after their dad, or, you know, their family passed away or whatever. So he's saying, you know, go, w- let's go ahead and act like you're dead right now. Go ahead and give me the money that's coming to me. Right. So he does all this. He leaves. But his dad's still looking out for him, hoping that he's going to come back because he knows that if he sees his son, he has to beat everyone else in the town to him. Because if somebody tries to return, they do something. I can't remember what it was called. But if somebody tries to return, they're basically shunned from that community. And the people would throw uh, jars and stuff on the ground, breaking glass around them and telling them that you like, you're not allowed to come back. So by him and, and he pulls up his, his garment and runs and, and exposes his legs, which is something that men in that time would not do either. So he does that. He outruns the people to get to him. So before the people can even get to him, he puts his jacket on, he gives him a ring and he's like, you know, it, everything's good. Everything, you know, it's all good. And so that just shows us that, grace outruns shame grace outruns all these things that we feel like we can't turn back to god that story that parable that jesus gives that's the example that he says grace is greater than all of these things you can all you're never too far you can always come back to me yeah i've never heard those before i love that comparison and i love and that story gets used too many times for salvation and you know what? Anyway, you're going to lead someone to the Lord. I'm not going to be, you know, picky about that because you're leading someone to the Lord. The beauty of that story is that he was already, the prodigal was already his son. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, and the beautiful thing about that is that he rejected his father. And us as Christians, sometimes we do reject God. Every time we sin, we're rejecting what God wants us to do. And yet God is like, okay, you 
he gives us free will. You can go do what you want. But when you're ready to come back, just come back to me and he'll run back to you. So I just, I love that picture that God gives us in that story. Actually, that entire chapter, you mm-hmm. know, then the next one about the, the lost coin or the lost mm-hmm. shoes, all of them, mm-hmm. they just all, when you read them together, they're so beautiful. I think I had an episode on that one time. Yeah. It's, just, it's beautiful. But. Yeah. It is. It is. It's. It's always that. It's that representation that it doesn't matter what we've done or or how much we feel like we can't go back to him. He's always going to leave the ninety nine for the one. He's always going to exactly. welcome that son back. It doesn't matter what you've done, and that's one of the lies that Satan tries to put in our head the most. Is like, okay, you've done too much. Now you can't be used, right? He can't take away our salvation, but he can do the best job that he can to take away our impact on others. Yeah. You know, and and that's something that we just cannot allow him to do. So. Speaking about impact, um, like the whole, like what led you really to start your podcast? Was it just to try to make an impact? I know you kind of oh. spoke on it a second ago, but yeah, the main thing. Okay, so I I told you on my podcast, um, I work at a boat company, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm I love mechanics. I love working on boats. I love all of that. So I was at a mechanic. Uh, shop like I was I was learning how to be a mechanic it, it's like a school thing it was an extracurricular type thing so I was there and I was you know I was trying to be a light and when you're in such a dark place it is so hard to be a light speaking of dark place this light <laughs> does not work so if you want me to go <laughs> over to that vehicle I can go <laughs> but, no, you're good dude uh, you're good okay so <laughs> You know, it's hard to be a light in dark places. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing that when you're in a dark place, a light shines even brighter. You know what I mean? It's even more impactful. So I was talking to some people about God. And I was talking to one person in particular. His name was Dylan. Dylan was so mean to me. Like, so mean to me. And every time that I, he would say something I didn't appreciate, he would be like, well, you're, it's just because you're a Christian. Like, you mm. know, he'd, he'd be so mean to me. And so I'm trying to be like Dylan. And I was like, I was sick of it. And so I was like, just as kindly as I could, I was preaching with fire, you know what I mean? To this kid. And I look up and like, I'm telling him how he, if, if I'm remembering the story, this is a few years ago. So this is what I remember. I believe I was telling him, like, you know, you're going to give an account someday. We're all going to give an account someday. And if you don't get right, then it, it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what I believe. It's true. We judge according to his truth. But I look up, and the entire class of, like, 20 kids or so are sitting there listening to what I had to say about the gospel. And that was just so impactful for me because – I was like, there's a hunger in these people. They might, they might make fun of me. They might do all these things, but there's a hunger that needs to be satisfied. And I was like, I can't do this all the time. I'm at, you know, I'm out of class. I'm supposed to be working. I cannot sit here and preach the entire two hours I'm here as much as, you know, I would enjoy to. So I had this, God laid on my heart to make something that I could share with them and be like, if you want to hear more on what God says about this, here's, you know, me talking about it for 45 minutes, <laughs> uninterrupted. But, um, you know, I started off, I was making, I had a YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel still up, I think. Yeah. And it didn't go anywhere. Yeah. And, and I was like, God, this is not worth my time because nobody's watching. I'm like, I'm not even saying, not even one person was watching. Mm-hmm. And I was getting dressed up. It's so much more difficult to make a video than it is to, do a podcast i can do my podcast in my pajamas <laughs> you know i have to get dressed i have to find a nice background i can't do yeah. it in the house because mom's like the house is dirty or the house, you know, <laughs> it's busy you can't do it in here right i have to wait till i go to the church it's a mess so i had a youtube channel and i wasn't doing anything and i i, I never listened to podcasts but you know i saw a little podcast app on my phone and i was like what is this so I go on there and, you know, I look up Adrian Rogers because Adrian mm-hmm. Rogers is so, like one of my favorite preachers. Oh, so yeah. I look him up and I'm like, man, this man has an impact just by his voice. Not by, I mean, you can watch him on YouTube, but his voice is what's leading people to the Lord. And I was like, okay, God, if, if you can help me figure this out because I don't know how to do any of it, then I'll 
try to do some podcasting. I'll try to use that as a medium to reach people. And it's super easy. I didn't know it was going to be easy. I thought it was going to be difficult. I had to, you know, because before you do it, they say, you know, you got to submit it to Apple Podcasts. I'm like, what? I don't know what that means. And it sounds, you know, <laughs> nerve wracking. I don't know what that is. Yeah. But so I, I was approved and I was doing it um, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify for a little bit. And the reception, like, was really, really good. And it was just amazing to see how God was able to use, you know, a piece of, like, I think I was just using my phone at the time. And, you know, he was able to use that and I was able to reach the kids at my class, the people at work. I worked at ACE at the time. Um, you know, just, and seeing the people around me get impacted. There wasn't many people outside of my city or my family listening. To, but to see the people I'm around be impacted by it was just so amazing to me. And like, that's what really led me to do it was I needed some sort of way that I can uninterrupted, just give people what the scripture says, not my opinion, not anything else, give people what the scripture says, and then, you know, communicate with them about, okay, well, you disagree with me. That's great. Show me in the scripture, you know, just have a conversation with people that I wouldn't be able to do outside of that. Mm -hmm. Problem one <laughs> is for like, a year, well, not quite a year. I think about seven months. I was doing it alone. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I didn't have anyone. I didn't have you. I didn't have anyone else to. I didn't know that there was anybody else like that had a small podcast. And you, I'm listening to Living Waters. People that have like thousands upon thousands of listens every mm -hmm. or every day. So you know, I'm doing this alone, and I'm getting discouraged. And then I find you guys, and like, just to, just to see that there's a community. So God, God gave me, you know, this burden to uh, impact the people around me, but now I'm able to, you know, I have a nice, we have a, we have a good circle that like, you know, we're not in it alone. And I, I felt alone for a little bit and God was like, you can keep going. Look at, you can keep doing this. So like, that's, if you want to know how you guys have impacted me, I'm not just talking to uh, Donovan here, Charlie, you know, all of them that uh, really have just helped me to realize Antoine that I'm, I'm not alone. Mm. You know, so I appreciate that. But yeah. yeah, that was a big rabbit trail just to say that I needed a way to give people the gospel, but I couldn't do give a 45 minute message every, you know, yeah. every uh, time I'm talking to somebody. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. And you said, you talked about it earlier a little bit. You said something about uh, how we can't do it alone, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's how it is. Cause the devil does try to make us feel like we're alone in this fight. And when I first started, you know, I didn't really know if anybody else was doing what I was doing. You know what I mean? I didn't yeah. know. And so I, I remember I was praying and I said, you know, Lord, can you allow me to meet a couple people that are, have the same kind of burden and on my heart and the same kind of fire and some kind of passion that I am, you know, trying to do something, you know, legitimately for you. Can you surround me with those type of people? And then I was praying that for like, not even a month. It might've been a, a couple of weeks. And then I met Antoine. And then from there I met, you know, all these different people. Now it's like you, Charlie, Cody, I can't even name all the people. And I, and I, uh, legitimately every person that I've been able to come in contact with, like I write their name down. I pray for that name specifically every night. And so my do uh, whenever it's time for me to pray at night, my kids are like, I just 20 minute. Dad's going to pray for 25, 30 minutes, you know, because it's just a bunch of names. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, I got to pray for right. my people. You know what I mean? So, but it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a, a beautiful thing. Very encouraging to see there are a lot of, a lot of people with the same fire that we have. Mm -hmm. And it can be discouraging. I, I'm sure we have other things we want to talk about too. So I don't want to be <laughs> too long on this. But it can also be discouraging to think that you're alone. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be an encouragement to people around you. You're not alone. You know, or people listening, you're not alone. Like, even at work, I'm at work. And if, if you, you know, are at my work right now and you're listening to this, I care about you. You know this. It's not a, it's not a question on whether, you know, I get picked on or whatever. And, you know, sometimes I can feel alone. Mm-hmm. However, then I have to realize, who am I doing this for? Right. You know? That's it. I'm not doing this to be some sort of, you know, big, uh, popular juggernaut. You know what I mean? I'm doing this for God. And it's an amazing thing once you realize that God's got your back. You're not alone. You're with God. 
So if you feel alone, remember, you're not alone. God is there. Mm-hmm. Seeing everything you're doing. So, yeah, I just think, too, yeah, you're right. You're not alone in the fight. Satan tries to make us feel like we're alone. But I think um, one thing, too, about if, if you start a podcast or if you start anything where you're trying to like bring honor and glory to God, um, the verse that the Lord put on my, my my mind and my heart for this year is Galatians 6, 9. that says, you know, do not grow weary in doing good. In due season, you will reap if you do not give up. And um, so I think a lot of times when we do something like this, um, we we have certain expectations or we have certain hope of where we think it's supposed to be. Right. And mm-hmm. if you look in Scripture, uh, God tells Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to, you know, multiply your family. You, you know, you're not even going to be able to count the generations to come after you. But he says in scripture, like, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great to bless others. Right. And because God knows, like, yeah. Abraham's going to point back to me and say, like, the source of all of this is because of God. Right. It's not because of Abraham. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I think when when you're trying to do something for God, sometimes you can feel like, well, this should have been bigger than it it was supposed to be already. Um, But then it goes back to what you said is what are you really truly, truly doing it for? Like, are you just Mm -hmm. doing it for the big numbers? Are you doing it for to be known or whatever? Are you doing it to, like it says in Luke, uh, you know, 15, like we were talking about a second ago, like Jesus leaving the 99 for the one, are you willing to do that for that one? If that's who God has called you to, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Put forth your effort towards. Mm -hmm. And I think, a lot of times too, people downplay just how of a, of a blessing and a gift it is to start out slow and to build. Because I think about it like this, like if you drop a podcast and then the second podcast that you come out with, it blows up, but you don't have anybody that's got your back. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you've got all this, this coming at you at once, which it's a lot like the Lord's blessed me to a place where he's like, he's allowed this to organically grow to a place where I have people messaging me sometimes and, it, and it's like overwhelm, you know, it gets to a point where it's kind of overwhelming at times and I don't have like a huge audience, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. like to, to start from zero to go to a hundred like that, to where you just blow up and then you have all that coming at you at once and you don't have anybody to reach out to and be like, dude, like what's the, what do I need to do? You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you've got nothing, but when you start out slow and you meet like-minded people around you and you develop that circle and you develop that group, then you know that in times of confusion or in times of uh, lack of um, confidence or whatever it is, you got dudes that are like-minded in terms of believers in God that you can reach out to them because like, that's what it's about. Like Paul talks about it in either first or second Corinthians, or it might've been in Timothy. I don't remember off the top of my head, but he just talks about how like we're all going through struggles. So it's like, we need to be intercessors for each other, lifting each other up in prayer because we're all going through the same type thing. We're all facing the same trials and tribulations. And and the people in my life that uh, check up on me and like, just even ask how I'm doing that day. You know, it, you'll never know how impactful that is to me. You know what I mean? And I think the same thing that we need to realize that I can be that impactful to other people, just asking mm-hmm. how their day is. And, you know, it, it doesn't take much to encourage somebody. No, yeah, you're it right. It also doesn't take that much to discourage somebody. Mm. So every word that we say, we have to, you know, <laughs> just try yeah. to be cautious on what we say. But. Yeah. And that, and that, yeah, that's the thing about it too. You just, a simple word like that could change the, the way somebody's looking at their day, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's just kind of, we, we have such a tendency to where's my blessing or where's my encouragement. And, you know, you can be missing out on so many opportunities to encourage somebody else or bless somebody else. And it's like, a blessing to be, to bless people. Like exactly. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a little bit about impact. Um, what, in your opinion, do you think like people like yourself or, or young listeners that might be listening right now, what, what do you think they can do in terms of trying to make a bigger or, or a more impactful like reach for Christ? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Number one would be get rid of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, too many times, and it, we were talking about, you know, well, what do people think of me? What, it, what, it, it doesn't matter. There's two things you can be doing this for. You can do it for God or you can do it for yourself. Too often times, you know, 
young people especially are so absorbed in self-image and all of that stuff. Friend, you are never going to find yourself if you do not find Christ first. You're not. I didn't. Nobody else did. You know, Disney Channel wants you to think, oh, you can be your best you when you embrace yourself. No, get rid of yourself and go fully into Christ. I mean, obviously there was a there was a prefix there. Get saved. If you're not saved, you have to <laughs> yeah. get saved to uh, you know to have any of these any of this power that Christ has given me or anyone else. Um, so the first one would definitely be just get rid of yourself, be fully in indwelled with the Holy Spirit. You know, you can't be filled with two different things. You know, mm-hmm. you have to choose. You can't. It says uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In James. So mm-hmm. just make it a conscious choice to say, okay, I'm getting rid of myself and I'm going to follow you. Second, I would say, and I think I have three. The second one, I would say, don't be obsessed with numbers. Don't be like you, like we were talking about is when we start being obsessed with numbers, how many people have you seen get saved? How many people, you know, well, you know, um, you know, Fred saw 20 people get saved in one weekend and I haven't seen anyone in my entire life. Don't do that. As soon as you start comparing yourself to other people and, you know, what other people have done, you will be discouraged. You won't be able yeah. to you, – you, there will always be somebody with a higher number than you, period. Always. Mm-hmm. Don't be obsessed with the numbers. So don't be don't be indulgent of yourself. Don't be so uh, – get rid of yourself. Don't be obsessed with numbers. And the third one I would say would be don't – how do, how do I word this? I'm trying to think of a tactical way to word this. My third one would be stop putting restraints on what you think God can do with you. We have too many times we have people telling us or us telling ourselves we can't do anything. We're too young. That's that's so wrong. You know what I mean? The uh, First Timothy, it yeah. talks about how uh, let no man despise thy youth. That means let, let no man look down on you because you're young. That's right. Be an example. Mm-hmm. Guys, we can be examples. We can be an example to the to the elderly. We just need to live the right way. We need to get rid of ourselves. We need to stop looking at numbers and stop being prideful and saying, well, if we're not if we're not like him, then it doesn't matter. No. And the third one would be just don't um I just completely blanked what I was trying to say there. Don't man, what did I say? Don't uh, don't put limits on what God can do with you. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, put yeah, limits yeah. on what God wanted to do. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. No, it's good. It's good. God can do amazing things in your life, and and God wants to do amazing things in your life. But if if we're not giving ourselves fully to God, then he he can't do it. He can't. Mm-hmm. You you can't be overflowing with something you're not first filled with. If you want to be overflowing and be a blessing, and you know, and be this amazing preacher do all these amazing things for God, you know, see all these people come to know the Lord. You can't do that. You can't be overflowing with God's spirit. If you're not in with it first, you know what I mean? Yep. So just, just be God's. That's essentially it. Just be God's. Don't be anyone else's. Don't be owned by numbers. Don't be yourselves. Be God's and watch him do amazing things in your life. So yeah. That's what that's I good. would say. Yeah, I think it. I think it's in John where it talks about from the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if you're filling your heart and you're filling your mind with the things of the Holy Spirit, those things are just going to come out, yeah. you know, instinctively. And and mm-hmm. another thing that she said that was good. Yeah, Paul talking to Timothy, tell him to to set the example. If you look at Ecclesiastes, also, I can't remember the exact chapter off the top of my head, but um, in Ecclesiastes, it talks about how like better is a young and poor man. And I'm butchering this, but it talks about like better is a young and poor man who basically is coachable than an old foolish king who couldn't take any counsel anymore. Mm. You know, so I think one of the biggest lies that the, that Satan tells everyone really is when you are a younger person, you're too young to be used by God. But then as you get older, it changes to, Oh wait, now you're too old to be used by God. Mm. And it changes like that. It 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 really does. Yeah. Cause it, that, cause I, I can speak from that personally because like when I was younger, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, uh, growing up, even like out of high school and stuff like that, I did stuff with our church. I helped with the with the youth. Um, you know, I would go and mow the lawn and stuff like that at the church and do the bus ministry and all that. And I felt even at that time, 
like that was that in the back of my head, like you're too young to do anything that's impactful. And then as I got older, got into my, you know, mid twenties and now tomorrow, it's going to be my last year in my twenties makes me sick. But that, that was kind of one thing that the devil tries to put in my head is like, now you're getting too old to where, you know what I'm saying? You can't right, yeah. have an impact. And it's, it's always going to be something that the devil's going to try to put in your head. That's a lie. Like you can be used. It doesn't matter if you're 13 or, you know, a hundred. You can be used where you're at if you're just willing to, like you said, empty yourself, get out of the way, pick up your cross daily, die to yourself, and then say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Use me where I am right now. It doesn't matter if it's one person that's having an impact. That one sheep Jesus went after or the shepherd went after and Jesus is going to do, you know, anytime there's one lost sheep, he's always going to go after him. So it's just like, don't downplay the impact that you can have on somebody else. doesn't matter if it, how many people it is. That is so good. And also, if, if Jesus, you know, Almighty God, is going after the one lost sheep, why do sometimes us as Christians think that we it's not worth it to go out after some people? You know what I mean? Or even yourself. If, or even Yeah, exactly. Like, why do we think that we're not worth it? That's exactly right. It's just sometimes I think that we let Satan come, you know, come uh, say – too many things to us and like get in our head too much because God thought we were worth it. God thought that person was worth it. And if we don't start seeing ourselves through God's lens, like I was saying earlier, then we're not going to be able to do anything for God and Mm -hmm. nothing's going to be impactful. So that's that's what I would say. And that was good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I want to say it's uh first Corinthians six. I want to say it's like 19 or 20 where it talks about we've been bought with a price Mm -hmm. and you know, Paul talks about we've been bought with a price. And so just understanding that, we have been bought with a price and Satan from the beginning of time has downplayed the importance of God downplayed every single thing, you know, throughout history. And he's going to just continue to do that. But that's why we need to, like you said earlier, like be in the scriptures for ourselves. We can't go off of like how you talked about how you felt like the way to become a Christian was through your mom's faith. Like we can't take anyone else's faith or anybody else's knowledge of the scripture as our own. Like we have to get into the word ourselves and know these things for ourselves because like I had a conversation with Cody Truett last week. And that was one thing that, that uh, I said to him is just like, there's specific passages that I've read in the Bible that I remember hearing about them growing up. And I'm like, this is not anywhere near like I remember hearing it. Mm-hmm. Right. It's kind of like the, what is it called? Like the Mandoza, what is it? Man, uh, oh, man. Mandela. Mandela effect. Yeah, Mandela it's kind of like yeah. that. You know, you think it was one way and then it's like, oh wait, it wasn't really that way at all. And so it's like we I always have thought going along with that, like just to just to show people, you know, the way that that is. I always grew up, grew up and I was taught that the woman that uh, was caught in adultery was Mary Magdalene. Mm. The church that I went to back then told me that. So, you know, when I started reading the Bible for myself, I was like, wait, that's not her. That's not, <laughs> like, it's so weird. Yeah. 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 There, and this, yeah. 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 And, and that's one thing that clicked to me not that long ago is just to how, like I said, I'm going through Genesis and, and just that fact. And I, I said it last week, but it's just like the fact that Abraham and Sarah were really brother and sister. And I didn't know. And then also you take it a step further. You look at Isaac. Isaac does the exact same thing. Like I was reading. Uh, I think it's like I want to say it's like Genesis 25 or 26. He, he does the same thing Abraham does. Abraham's like, tell these people that you're my sister. Isaac does the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's just it's crazy yeah. to to see just even back then. And it's so true. History always repeats itself. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. it's just it's just a, a, a cycle. And um, so, yeah, so um, I'm going to take too much more of your time. But you kind of talked about what you think, what the youth could do. What do you think, in your best opinion, would be like what could adults do better like to encourage the youth or try to like push the youth more towards Christ. What do you think we could do? Ways that adults have helped me was mm-hmm. to realize, well, first in order for an adult to help me, I have to realize that I'm still young. I'm still learning, you know? So that's, that's more of my mindset that I need to get into. But adults approaching me as a young adult being like, okay, you know what? You're doing great. You, um, you, you fell a little bit here. Like I'm, I'm preaching. I preach a lot. Mm-hmm. Actually, tomorrow or this Sunday, I'm going to be preaching like the main message at my church, which is really cool. I'm there so you go. That's awesome. That that's, yeah, excited that that's a that just that God's allowed me to do that. Yeah. And something that 
pastor's always done so well is be like, you know what? You did really good here, here, and here, but he doesn't fake that I did something wrong. You know, like you, you messed up here. That it's fine. Just don't do this the next time. And just don't let, don't be always tearing down us. Mm-hmm. And also don't always lift us up. You know, just yeah. like we're real humans critique, but also teach and tell us, okay, yeah, you're, you know, you, you have room to grow, but you're doing good. So again, just be an encouragement, lift us up. That's the best way that I feel per helped by an adult and also tell us stories <laughs> you know like tell us the way that uh, yeah i did that once and it ended up really bad or i did that once and it, it was really good you know like just t- engage with us and tell us from your you know wisdom that you have over your you're 12 years older than me you have a lot of knowledge in those 12 years that i don't have you know what i mean so mm-hmm. just don't think that one, you know, we're too ignorant to understand or two, we're too, we already know that stuff because we need help. I need help to keep growing on, you know, right. Yes. Yeah. Be an encouragement and also teach. Like that's what I need adults. I have, I have friends around me to, you know, to have fun with, which I can have fun with adults too, but I need to be taught. And that's just the main thing that yeah. I can think of that helps me. And yeah. I, I assume that would help the rest of the youth. Yeah, uh, I would think so. So yeah, I, I think too. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think not not talking down to somebody just because they're younger with you, like you said. Paul tells Timothy, "Don't let people despise you for your youth." But I think too, one thing that um, adult older people adults, you know, I still don't feel like I'm you know an, an old man or anything like that. <laughs> right, so no, I'm no, yeah. I'm still gonna lump myself in there with you guys. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> I love it. Is 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 um, being willing to what's the way I want to word it being willing to um, show interest in what you guys are more interested in than trying to drag you into something that we're into. Right. Like for me, you know, I'm a big basketball fan. I've always loved basketball. I grew up playing basketball, but I I don't want to get to a place like with my son where I'm not interested in what he's doing because it's not what I like, Mm -hmm. you know, like if he doesn't like basketball, he likes, you know, soccer or whatever, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> but I, I don't want to, I don't want him to ever look back and say like, you know, my dad wasn't into that. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like yeah. that for adults is something that we need to do. It's just like, it just because it's something that we're not into doesn't mean that, you know, we can't encourage, you know, a younger person in that because they are into it. And, you know, there's so many people right now, if you look at the statistics that they're growing up without a father and so many men need to like step up. And even if it's just at church, where you're seeing this kid once a week, you know, go up to them, put your arm around them, you know, ask them how they're, they're doing or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just showing any kind of interest in them. You never know how far that could go because like my, my parents split up when I was um, in uh sixth grade going, no, yeah. Sixth grade going into seventh grade, something like yeah. that. I was in middle school and um, my dad moved away. So uh, after he got remarried, so I didn't see him a whole lot. But one thing that the Lord did for me was he constantly had uh, Christian men come around me in my life. Like I, I, since I played basketball, I had basketball coaches and stuff. And it, there was never really like a consistent guy. It was different people, but there was always somebody that I could kind of look to. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it meant a lot to me, even if it was just for like a year. Um, there's things that were said to me in that year that I'll never forget, you know, and it, it just it shaped me and helped mold me into the man that I am today. And so it's just, you never know if that one little word that you might could be saying to somebody that's younger to you is going to make an impact on that person for the rest of their life. Like a simple word could change, literally change the way that they look at everything. Yeah. Don't underestimate the power that we have because it can be it just like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So and also, I think I- it takes a, it takes a long time to build up somebody's trust. Mm. It takes a second to destroy that trust that you built up. So, like, just be, just look, young people and old people are like, you're in the young person area. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, just be cautious about what we say. We've, I think we've touched upon that a couple times today. And it's just because it's important, you know, mm-hmm. be tactical. I always try to, to slow down. And that's why I pause a lot because I'm trying to articulate what I want to say. It's because if I say something wrong, it, it's, you know, 
everything I've said, just, uh, what do you call it? Everything I said just gets tainted if I'm mm-hmm. not saying the right thing. So just our words are so impactful, whether you're young or older. And yeah. you just need to realize that God yeah. gave us a mouth for a reason. Like, and it's impactful. The tongue, the tongue is an unruly evil. If, if we don't put some bridles on it, like the Bible says. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Like mm-hmm. there's, there's a reason that the Lord allowed us to be speaking beings, like separating us from all of other creations. Like we're the only ones that are speaking beings and, yeah. and the power that just, he spoke all of this into existence. And there's just such power in words that we're mm-hmm. not taking advantage of, you know? And, um, yeah, there was something else that I was going to say about that too, but now I've, uh, I, I don't remember what it was. Now. Day, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, man, this has been a lot of fun. It, it goes by the one, episodes like these go by too quick. And I can't believe we've been going for over an hour, but um, uh, you want to tell the people where going. they, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I keep going too. <laughs> what uh, you want to tell the people, we're going to have to do another one. I know uh, Char- uh, I told you and Charlie, I guess it was like in November, or December. I wanted to get both of you guys on at the same time. I think that'd be and, fun. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. And uh, Antoine, actually, I told him about it, and he's like, "Maybe I can come on there too. It'd be all four of us." That would be. And awesome. I was like, "Yeah, that would." I said, "That would be pretty crazy. That might be like a five-hour-long episode." Yeah. <laughs> Just clear, this, clear the weekend, guys. It's going to take all weekend. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be a part one, two, three, four, five. So, um, tell the people where to uh, where to find you, where to find your podcast, your Instagram, all that stuff, and I'll put Enjoy. it in the the show notes and all that. Awesome. Well, you can find my podcast on anywhere you listen to podcasts, whether that's Stitcher, you know, Amazon, iHeartRadio, whatever you listen to, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's on there. Um, some people actually, you know, I don't know if you, I don't know if that happens to you, but some people actually take my show and put it on another platform. Mm-hmm. I haven't put it on iHeartRadio, but somehow it's on there. Oh, so really? That's awesome. Whatever happens there, I don't know, but not, you that's can awesome. find me on iHeartRadio. So, uh, yeah, so you can find me anywhere on there. Best place to get a hold of me would be Instagram, um, mm-hmm. and I I don't know what my actual uh, tag is, so that that'll be in the description here. Yeah, but, God. Um, is it the Godcast? Uh, the name of the podcast. You didn't say the name of the podcast. Godcast with Benjamin Shelby. Oh, the Shelby. podcast is the Godcast yeah, yeah. with Benjamin Shelby. But my Instagram name, I don't know what my Instagram name is. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I I will put it. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put it down in the description. I'll just yeah, scroll down and I'll down, put those links. It's all good. It's not a big deal. Well, I'll put it in the show notes. I'll put it everywhere. So you guys definitely need to go check it out and encourage this man and support what he's doing because um, his episodes. And I think you've got pro- you got pretty much just as many episodes as I got as yeah. I have out, don't you? Yeah, I think how, so. How, like fifty how, something. Yeah. How many? How long have you been going? How long has your podcast been going for? First episode was in November of twenty one. Okay. So I'm yeah. a little bit slower. I do it at, like biweekly now because uh-huh. I was, I'm into school and all that stuff. So. Sure. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's an amazing thing to see the way that God's worked in it. So I'm happy yeah, about yeah, that. definitely. Yeah. I had somebody, uh, reached out to me just the other day and, um, I'm not sure who she was. I think it was a woman. She, uh, I think if I remember correctly, her, her profile picture, I think it was like her family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she reached out and said something about one of my episodes. And, uh, then she said something about, yeah, I love yours and, uh, Ben's podcast. Oh, that's nice. And uh, yeah, and I was I like, oh, okay, I guess this woman knows uh, Ben. So yeah, shout out to you. Or, I'm shout, sure out to you shout out to you. Shout out to you. What I don't remember what her name was. And we didn't even, we, we didn't conversate back and forth. She just sent me that, and uh, I said, you know, thank you for you know the kind words and whatnot. And I said, yeah, Ben's a good dude. I said, I'm getting ready to have him on the podcast soon. And uh, so yeah, shout out to you if you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who you are, but they, thank you. <laughs> The yeah. Best. <laughs> so yeah. So dude, just keep keep doing what you're doing. Um, like I said, I I started whenever we first connected the first time before I ever went on your podcast. Um, we we kind of started talking back and forth, and I was like, I want to check out what this dude's doing. And so I started listening to your podcast, and I was like, this this kid, you know, he's on fire. He's got it. And so um, I think it's cool to see how you were talking about the Holy Spirit kind of impacted you, and then when you were younger, and then into your teenage years talking about so you were at that camp would you say 2020 so you're what yeah, 14 15 years old something like that yeah. and and to to feel the holy spirit pressing on you in that way um you know it's it's i love to hear i love to see it and so i just want to encourage you keep doing what you're doing because all that's going to happen is just it's just going to get better 
It's just yeah. going to get bigger and, and the Lord's just going to continue to bless it. If you just keep that same mindset and that, that fire that you've got right now. And I'm, you know, anytime you need to reach out, you know, you got me. So thank you for being yeah, here. Uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard to do when you think you're alone, but I'm glad that we're not. So. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So you got any, uh, any, uh, like a life verse or any final words of encouragement before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, my, one of my life verses is actually, uh, well, I have two of them, but I'll just say the one. Uh, yeah, my, my life verse would be Proverbs 3, 6, which is in all I ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And in every way that I walk, I just hope that I can continue walking in the Lord's will. And whoever you are, whoever's listening, you know, even you, Donovan, just don't underestimate the power that we have. Like we have, the Bible says that, um, you know, all things are possible through Christ that strengthens you. Like you can, you can overcome anything through Christ. So just take a hold of it, take advantage of it, claim God as your own. And um, yeah, let's just, let's just keep going, moving forward. Let's yeah. All together. So yeah, man, that's powers. awesome. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on. We're definitely going to do it again. It won't be, it won't be as long to get you on next time, hopefully, <laughs> but uh, hopefully. yeah. Well, um, thank you guys so very much for listening. Y'all go check out what Ben's doing. Lord willing, we will talk to you guys next week. God bless you guys. Remember, we're all called to act. So let's get after it. God bless you guys.